And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Luke chapter 19, verse 40. For the stone will cry out from the wall. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 11. Said a theologian, I believe Jesus was prophesying that there would come a time when man would no longer proclaim God and the stones would cry out in proclamation. We are living in those times, the statues of Christ and the Virgin Mary weeping around the world are doing the job we should be doing, proclaiming God in the world, the reality of God, the supernatural. The Magisterium of the Roman Catholic Church makes all authoritative and final decisions regarding any individual or collective claims of personal apparitions of the Blessed Mother. The apparitions and or lacrimations associated with La Salette, France, Fatima, Portugal, Akita, Japan, Syracuse, Sicily, Cochabamba, Bolivia, and Civitavecchia, Italy, have been approved by the Church. Other sites and lacrimations cited in this program have not been formally approved. On these, the producers obediently submit themselves and await the final judgment of the Church. Throughout history and throughout the world, witnesses have reported statues and icons shedding tears. The tears may be water or oil or blood, and in most instances, they defy scientific explanation. What do they mean? Why are they here? And how should we respond? In an age when science is called upon to explain everything, why has there been such a dramatic and unprecedented increase in the unexplainable? And why at a time when mankind feels so painfully alone has God responded with an outpouring of tears from heaven? Hello, I'm Joseph Campanella. Throughout history, humanity has encountered certain mysteries and certain phenomena which have led even the most skeptical to the unmistakable conclusion that God exists and that he is an intimate part of life here on our planet. And it seems today that heaven is literally crying out to humanity, weeping copious tears in every corner of the globe in an attempt to draw humanity back to God before it is too late. Today, these tears, also known as lacrimations, have literally become a flood. The tremendous increase is almost unbelievable and, and nothing like it in the history of the world. All over the world, all over the world. Reports of this remarkable phenomena are cited in every region of the world with increasing frequency. In the bustling city of Caracas, Venezuela, an image of the Virgin of Corromoto, the patroness of Venezuela, along with an image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, have been reported to weep tears and tears of blood. Both the sick and the faithful come to pray and witness for themselves this heavenly manifestation. In the same country, less than two hours away, another icon oozes a mysterious healing oil. Pilgrims journey from around the world in search of healing and answers. Quite often, the fruits of their search and this miraculous oil are visible in the countless plaques of thanksgiving that line the walls and in the crutches, wheelchairs and braces that are left behind. These personal artifacts are a powerful testament to these tears from heaven. Thousands of miles in a cultural world away, in Damascus, Syria, an icon belonging to the Nazur family has wept copious tears of oil. These lacrimations have also been accompanied by other mystical phenomena. Myrna, the principal visionary and recipient of these heavenly manifestations, has reported and received messages from the Virgin Mary and her son Jesus. She has been documented suffering the painful wounds of Christ's passion, also known as the stigmata, while at other times she has been witnessed exuding an unexplainable profusion of olive oil from her body. Dr. Anton Mansour, a prominent Beverly Hills surgeon, has studied this phenomena extensively. 
being a physician, I tried to explain her extraordinary phenomena scientifically and medically. And to be honest with you, I failed. Because all the science, my examination, medically, proved to be that this lady is quite in good health. And what happened to her cannot be explained medically. Many physical and spiritual healings have taken place through the anointing of this oil. Even copies of the icon that have been sent around the world, as well as those images brought into the home, have also reportedly began weeping. In Trinidad on Thursday, February 15, 1996, the nuns of the Corpus Christi Carmelite Order witnessed the statue of Our Lady of Lourdes weeping tears of blood. One of the country's most respected scientists, professor of medicine Courtney Bartholomew, was called to investigate. He had the blood tested at a leading forensic laboratory and found the substance to be human blood. The statue would weep again the following year and a third time on February 20th, 1997, each time bleeding more profusely. Professor Bartholomew personally witnessed the event. She wept tears of blood at first in Trinidad and then uh plain tears afterwards and I think it was because at just after the weeping of blood many of us went into the chapel and prayed fervently and assuaged her sorrow and turned her blood into plain tears and we can do further than that we could pray enough and convert and turn her t tears into dryness and she will cry no more how can you turn the tears of a mother from grief into joy, simply by doing as she says. In Houston, Texas, in the home of the Ayu family, miraculous cures are being reported and numerous images are said to weep. During the filming of this segment, as a visible sign and to the amazement of all present, the eyes of this image of Christ welled up and cried. What you are witnessing is actual footage. The substance flowing from the eyes is pure olive oil. The producers seen here holding the image can testify firsthand that there are no tubes of any kind carrying oil, nor had the painting been tampered with in any way. In the home of the Ayub family, there are many paintings, icons, and statues made from a myriad of different materials, all weep a mysterious, fragrant oil. Amazingly, even images independently brought in from other places have wept this mysterious oil. Structural tests have determined that there is nothing unusual about the construction of the house, nor the prayer room, that would cause oil to form on religious objects. The origin of the tears remains a mystery. From the Orient to Africa, the Middle East to the Americas, reports continue to be heard. And yet even with such a global flood of tears, it appears that most people remain indifferent. Perhaps they simply don't understand the significance of these tears. Ultimately, these tears from heaven represent the voice crying in the wilderness, the message of the prophets begging the people to amend their lives. When taken in context, they are a desperate call to holiness while there is still time. Desperate because we know from history what is likely to follow. Well, throughout the history of Christendom, uh, any time any kind of sign was given, it was usually as a warning of some disaster that was approaching upon either the locality, or upon the given nation, or upon the world. Indeed, history reveals that when statues have wept in a particular region of the world, those areas have usually been immediately followed by times of great danger for humanity and for the church. Such noted cases include the time immediately preceding the European invasion by the Moors, the French Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, and the proliferation of atheistic communism, including the communist takeovers of Albania, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Poland. In most cases, the reported lacrimations were confined to a particular region with a presumed message for the people of that culture and time. 
Alarmingly, today the world is literally dripping in tears. In the late 60s and the 70s, these weepings began to come in tremendous numbers. There's no comparison. You probably have more uh, weepings in the last 10 years or 20 years than in all the history of the church. It's a wake-up call. It's time to wake up. You know, we're, we, all of us, I think, tend to be uh, sort of uh, moving around as in, in uh, half, half asleep. Although these tears from heaven are silent, they contain a powerful message for each one of us personally, as well as for all humanity. Quite often, perhaps through their simplicity, or through the stirring of some deep emotion, these tears cry out for our attention, and in some cases, even signal warning for humanity. As a scientist, who has seen many of these weeping phenomena throughout the world, there is nothing in my science which can explain these phenomena. And so, I rely then on my faith. And my faith tells me that these are the manifestations of the greatest scientists of all, Almighty God. Science has told us that there is neither the creation nor the destruction of matter. That all that can happen is it can undergo change. And yet, when we see an icon weeping, we see a suspension of the laws of nature. For here is matter that is miraculously coming into existence, which previously did not exist, which does not come from any place. It simply begins to be there. And this is because God, the, the creator of the laws of nature, is above those laws. And he is capable of suspending them, and he does suspend them in order to bring about our salvation. So why do statues cry? Why are apparitions taking place? Why is Our Lady giving messages? to help people believe. One of the most remarkable manifestations of these tears from heaven occurred in Cochabamba, Bolivia. Cochabamba is a place of great color, contrast, and diversity. A place where the people show an openness to their faith as vividly expressed in a monument of Christ that overlooks their city. It is here that a statue of Jesus Christ has been reported weeping blood. In a documentary by Australian lawyer and producer Ron Cesariero, the phenomena of this weeping statue was filmed and examined. Watch closely in this rare video as a tear begins to well about an inch below the right eye. The tear now moves slowly down the eye and eventually falls. Cochabamba Television ran the story shortly after the lacrimations began. As a reporter, when I first came here, I was skeptical. But I was there for over an hour and a half. And there was no way, no way that anybody ever got close to it. And there was no way that anybody could have put water or any substance that would have made it look like tears or blood. As we were talking to people, we saw a tear, a tear in his left eye, and it began to roll down the face. Then I took a small piece of cloth, and after I wiped the tear away, I realized that we actually had a drop of blood, and this cloth shows what I was able to wipe off the face. Professor Ricardo Castagnon is a neuropsychophysiologist who specializes in the subject of understanding the brain and human behavior. Over the past six years, he has investigated individuals around the world who claim to have apparitions of Christ and the Virgin Mary. His studies also include related mystical phenomena of the stigmata and weeping statues reported in Akita, Japan, in Civitavecchia, Italy, and here in Cochabamba, Bolivia. I saw the, the bluff coming out from his left eye. Then I decided to take a sample. The best place was uh, five, six centimeters below the left eye. And I took the sample. Here we have a cotton with a little bit of blood. But I, I have taken this, was, this sample direct from the eye. For this, I can uh, say that I did it and that I saw it. But for me, it's not enough to have only uh, the typical analysis type of blood, I would like to have the DNA analysis. After I took the sample, I kept the sample only by myself 
all the time and uh, there's no chance that somebody could have to uh, touched this woman. Professor Castagnon decided to have the blood officially tested at a genetic testing laboratory in the United States. He personally handed the samples over for testing so that it could not be said that knowledge of the origin of the sample influenced the outcome of the test. If there's adequate DNA present, we can run it through our PCR-based testing systems and generate a human genetic profile. The laboratory, after a thorough investigation, determined that results showed positively that there was human DNA present in the blood sample submitted. To further validate the lab's findings, another sample was then submitted to an Australian state government forensic laboratory who independently arrived at the same conclusion and thus confirmed the authenticity of the first findings. This was indeed human blood with human DNA present. But for many, this evidence may still not be enough to convince them that these are truly tears from heaven. So the statue was then subjected to a computerized axial tomographical scanner, commonly known as the CAT scan. This equipment shoots a thin beam of x-rays through the object from many angles and produces cross-sectional images on a computer screen. These sectional cuts enable every component of the image to be identified and closely examined. And this way, they would be able to determine if the statue had any holes or mechanisms that would allow it to cry or bleed. The finding was that the statue was of externally solid plaster containing only an internal void of air. They found no liquids or mechanisms in the statue. Thus, science was once again unable to explain the origin of these incredible tears. The statue itself weeping has to have a meaning. If it's coming from God, it has to have a message. When Jesus, the statue of Jesus bleeds, I believe, it's expressing a very serious state of affairs in the church and in the world. I believe it's very serious. A theological commission was established and carried out its own investigation. As a result of their findings, the bishop declared the lacrimations authentic. He has sought from the Vatican the conditions necessary to have it declared a signum dei, an act of God. Just because a statue of Jesus or Mary weeps, it does not automatically mean that they're supernatural. Once science rules out human hoaxes and natural causes, we must still discern whether a lacrimation is from God or is a subtle snare from the adversary. And there's no shortage of tears to discern. As we've noted before, apparitions and lacrimations are occurring all over the world. Tears are generally expressions of personal joy or sorrow, of love or pain. They show concern for events present, and they forewarn of danger to come. But when tears shed by images are declared miraculous by the church, they take on a new significance. It was this way on August 29, 1953, at Syracuse, Sicily, when Angelo Januso and his wife, Anonina, experienced the supernatural. They were awaiting a child, and Anonina was suffering severe pain. In her agony, she looked up at a plaster plaque of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and was amazed to see tears welling up from the eyes of the Madonna. At that moment, all her pain and paralysis miraculously vanished. The image continued to weep for four days and was witnessed by much of the population. One of the many pilgrims to experience this phenomenon was a Polish bishop by the name of Karol Wojtyła, who visited Syracuse while attending the Second Vatican Council. He would return again as Pope John Paul II to officially dedicate the shrine as Our Lady of Tears. It was this dedication ceremony that gave him a chance to express his views on the spiritual meaning of these tears. The tears of the Syracuse image were shed after the end of World War II and should be understood as a reaction to the tragedies of the war and the problems emerging from it. Those tragedies and problems include the extermination of the sons and daughters of Israel and the threat for Europe coming from the East, from a declaredly atheistic communism. 
the tears of the Madonna belong to the order of signs. She is a mother crying out when she sees her children threatened by a spiritual or physical evil. Indeed, Our Lady suffers along with us because she is the mother of all humanity and she loves each of us as her own child. The most dramatic evidence of anguish is when tears from heaven are tears of blood. In Civita Vecchia, Italy, a statue of the Madonna of Medjugorje has been weeping tears of blood near Rome. Hundreds of thousands are flocking to see, to beseech, to reflect, and to pray. It has been reported that as many as 7,000 people a week jam the little church that houses this statue. Unlike the many apparitions of the Virgin Mary, Our Lady here has never pronounced a word in Civita Vecchia. She has only wept. The local bishop, Monsignor Girolamo Grillo, initially a skeptic, changed his opinion when he personally witnessed the statue weep while in his very hands. This is a message for everyone. Let's not forget she is the mother of all, because at the foot of the cross, Jesus entrusted mankind to his mother. The tears are on their own an eloquent message for man today. The phenomena cries out to the whole world to dry the tears our mother sheds for all the sins in the world today. Since the weepings of Civitavecchia, at least 13 statues have been reported to have cried in Italy. These silent tears from heaven reawaken our sense of sin and our search for purity and holiness. Maybe the search itself is part of the message. Yet we crave to hear from Mary exactly why she sheds tears from heaven. Fortunately, she tells us at several locations in her own words. On Saturday, September 19, 1846, on the eve of the Feast of Our Lady of Seven Sorrows, two children, Maximin Giraud and Melanie Calva, were tending their cows on a warm, clear day in the Alps of southeastern France, near the village of La Salette. Suddenly, they saw a luminous lady within a globe of light. She was crying with her hands over her face. Tears flowed from the eyes of the Virgin as she gently spoke. My children, peace shall not be given to the world until men have converted. Pray, fast, refrain from blasphemy. Keep holy the Sabbath and pray especially for your priests and bishops, for the world will be plunged into confusion. Implore God for his pardon and mercy before it is too late. Tears continued to flow from her eyes as she delivered an ominous message concerning the future of the world. She spoke of the world losing faith in God, of future wars, of changes in nature, and disasters both natural and man-made, and even of a heavenly fire which would befall the earth unless mankind returned to God. The Virgin warned of a great famine and entrusted each child with a secret. Her motherly tears continued until finally she looked towards heaven with joy and melted into the brilliant light. As history would later reveal, humanity's response was not enough and the potato famine intensified, especially in Ireland. Over a million people died in Europe due to the wheat shortage. France's vineyards were devastated by blight. As a consequence of the sins against God, failure to keep the Sabbath holy and God's name holy, God withdrew his protection, and mankind was forced to do penance via the famine. So serious was the message of La Salette that Pope Pius IX, who had read the secrets, commented years later. Do you wish to know the secret? This is it. Unless you do penance, you shall all perish. So Our Lady cries for us, for what will happen to us if we don't return to the path towards God. As the perfect mother, she suffers on our behalf as long as she can to restrain the justice of God and prolong the time of his mercy. If humanity fails to acknowledge the call of our Lord on his mother, then she can no longer hold back the hand of justice. Our Lady, as a loving and tender mother, is not only concerned with the fate of her children, 
but also with the fate of her church. Since the church is the mystical body of Christ and Mary is the mother of Jesus, tradition has long held that Mary is mystically mother of the church. One of the statue's most frequently reported weeping is the Rosa Mystica. On the base of this statue are the words Mater Ecclesia Ora Pro Nobis, Mother of the Church, pray for us. Today, reports of these lacrimations come from all over the world. For instance, in Elbano, in the northern part of Italy, a one-foot porcelain statue of the Rosa Mystica reportedly wept blood. In South America, many Rosa Mystica statues have wept tears and miraculous cures have occurred. Numerous Rosa Mystica statues have wept in Mosmechel in Belgium beginning on September 25, 1982, the Feast of the Seven Sorrows of Mary, the same feast day that Our Lady cried at La Salette. I have to admit I did see tears weeping, Our Lady weeping, um, a Rosa Mystica statue weeping in Mosmechel in Belgium. Three statues were weeping at the time we were there. I can tell you that all of us had a feeling of awe, a feeling of respect. We were quiet, we were prayerful, we were overcome. And when we went back, we said our prayers with such a devotion. And none of us will ever forget that. It was profound. Perhaps the tears shed from these statues remind us of Our Lady's deep sorrow and the continuing need to pray for priests and religious who are prime targets of diabolic temptation. His greatest aggression and his greatest uh, antagonism is toward priests and the clergy. Because if he can draw away a clergy member, then he draws away many people who are around that clergy member. The fact that some priests are being condemned to hell makes these tears from heaven all the more urgent. This was indeed the case with Roman Catholic priest Father Stephen Shire. In October 1985, Father Shire was in a violent head-on collision that snapped his neck and tore half his scalp in half. While paramedics worked desperately to save him, Father Shire's life was dimming. What occurred next would forever change him. Unconscious and barely clinging to life, Father Shire slipped into death's grasp. Suddenly, he found himself alone in another dimension, something he described as a vast spiritual void. I was before the judgment seat of Almighty God, His Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord went through my unconfessed, unforgiven, mortal sins, all the sins of my life, really, for your sentence. He said, I have to sentence you to hell. It was as if I had pronounced the sentence myself. I had chosen my destiny. He was just honoring that decision. Um, I did not see him. I just heard him. So the next voice I heard uh, was that of a female. Um, I didn't see her either. But she said, Son, would you please spare his life and his eternal soul? He said, Mother, he's been a priest for 12 years for himself and not for me. Let him reap the punishment he deserves. She came back, she said, but son, if we give to him special graces and strengths, and then see who bears fruit, if not, your will be done. There was a very short pause, and he came back and said, Mother, he's yours. Despite only a 15% chance of surviving and injuries that should have left him paralyzed for life, Father Shire defied all odds and made an unexplainable recovery. It is clear we must pray and make sacrifices for those consecrated to religious life as well as for our neighbors. Prayer, penance, sacrifice. These three words sum up the message of the weeping Rosa Mystica. 
Prayer, suffering, and reparation were also central to the apparitions of Mary and an angel at Fatima, Portugal. So it is no surprise that the Fatima pilgrim statues that tour the world have also shed tears from heaven. She has wept, documented cases over 30 times. One time as many as 6,000 people seeing the statue weep. You had the International Pilgrim Virgin around 1971, 72, was weeping again and again, but it didn't come into prominent notice until at New Orleans in July 1972, it wept two weepings, and that went around the world. Those pictures all around the world caused great excitement. Mary did not cry in her apparitions at Fatima, but the Fatima events teach us how to dry the tears Our Lady is weeping through prayer and sacrifice. And the Fatima events warn us of what may happen if we fail to respond. It was the spring of 1916. Lucia dos Santos, age nine, and her cousins Francisco Marto, eight, and his sister Jacinta, six, were playing while watching over the sheep, when an angel appeared. Over the course of his three visits, the angel instructed the children to pray unceasingly and to offer up everything within their power as a sacrifice to the Lord in reparation for the sins, indifference, and sacrilege by which God is most offended. The following year, on May 13, 1917, Our Lady appeared to the children and asked them to come to the sheep pasture on the 13th of each month through October. Each of Our Lady's apparitions contained a reminder to pray the rosary every day. She asked for sacrifices and to offer one's suffering and reparation for sin and for the conversion of sinners. To underscore that souls are going to hell forever because there was no one to pray and offer sacrifices for them, the lady opened her hands and the rays of light that shone from her palms made the ground vanish. The children saw a great sea of fire. In this, they saw demons and souls in human form, like transparent burning embers raised into the air by flames that issued from within themselves, then falling back like sparks in a huge fire. These tormented souls shrieked and groaned with incredible pain and despair. You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. To all who embrace it, I promise salvation. If what I say to you is done, Many souls will be saved, and there will be peace. Our Lady in Fatima told the children, more people go to hell for sins of the flesh than for any other reason. It's the primary sin of our world right now, sins of the flesh, impurity. God's purpose in creating sexuality and creating the sexual experience between a husband and wife was to bring them together in love, to bring them together in appreciation, to bond them, and to have children and family. And if we lose a sense of why God gave us the gifts that he did give us with our body, with our souls, we're saying that we don't believe in God. We believe that we are the gods. And that is one of the reasons why Mary's crying, because so many are going to hell for, that, for those sins. Most souls go to hell Jacinta said, because of sins of the flesh. Not that they are the most awful sins, they're not. They're sins easily forgiven by God, easily forgiven. But what happens is, a person commits one sin, then they begin to think how bad they are. They don't go to confession, they're ashamed. And then, then they get into this state of non-forgiveness. But not to go to confession, not to, not to say you're sorry and have a resolve to, to overcome it. That is the cause of a loss of souls. Our Blessed Mother promised a miracle would occur on October 13th so that all might believe. It is estimated that between 70 and 100,000 people crowded into the sheep pasture to await the promised miracle. They stood in ankle deep mud and water and were soaked to the skin by the chilling rain. 
Mary had revealed in one of the secrets of Fatima that if the world did not repent, various nations would be annihilated. Now the world got a preview. Without warning, the sun plunged towards the earth, terrifying the crowd with its burning heat. Many thought they would be crushed or burned to death. Most fell to their knees, crying in repentance and appealing for mercy. And then suddenly the fire went back into the sky and mingled with the sun. And you know, it had been a terrible rainstorm before. Now suddenly everything was dry. The water had disappeared. What had been mud was dry soil. And people were, people thought, could have thought that they imagined this fire out of the sky because they weren't burned. But they, there was no imagining that they had been soaking wet and they were dry. And they were standing in water and now they were on dry land. And they were, they were feeling the, the soil, looking at each other in amazement. But it was unanimous. They had all thought they were going to die. But some of them weren't afraid. And those who I talked to who weren't afraid were daily communicants. All present, even atheists and skeptics, witnessed this great miracle and testimonials fill the newspapers. In Akita, Japan, in 1975, a series of remarkable tears from heaven accompanied apocalyptic messages and apparitions approved by the local bishop, John Shojito Ito. Now, when the bishop of Akita, Bishop John Ito, had this message about the chastisement, he was very concerned about making it public. He was very concerned about giving his uh, approval, saying that this message was from heaven. He went four times to Rome, and Cardinal Ratzinger, recognizing the bishop's, uh, what do I say, uh, concern, told him, Bishop, it's the same as the third secret of Fatima. The events of this remarkable story begin in 1973 in a Catholic convent in a small hamlet outside the city of Akita, Japan. Little did the world realize what extraordinary events and apocalyptic messages would soon be revealed. The principal recipient of these heavenly manifestations was a humble nun by the name of Sister Agnes Sasagawa. Sister Agnes would undergo many mystical experiences, including a miraculous healing from deafness, frequent visitations from a guardian angel, as well as apparitions of the Mother of God. Though much of her life was marked by great illness and suffering, Sister Sasagawa was given yet another mystical gift. On June 28, 1973, a mysterious and excruciatingly painful cross-shaped wound formed in the hollow of her left palm and began to bleed. And Bishop Ito told me personally that the wound was very beautiful. It was cross-shaped. And he said, if you held her hand up, you could see right through her hand. And it, it was bleeding and extremely painful. She could barely open her fingers. But there was a wonderful fragrance from the wound on the hand. One of the things the angel said to Sister Agnes is that Our Lady is in much greater pain than you are. The wounds that she suffers, the wound that she suffers is much more painful than your wound. And this dumbfounded Sister Agnes because she thought the pain was so excruciating she could barely stand it. The next week, a bleeding wound appeared on the right hand of the statue of Our Lady in the chapel. Sister's guardian angel told her the flowing of blood is significant for the conversion of sinners and in reparation for sins. In Akita, our Lady said to Sister Agnes, many times I have been able to hold back the hand of the Lord in chastisement by offering to him the passion of my son and the sacrifices of my victim souls. Our Lady told me that she wishes for souls who can appease the anger of the Heavenly Father by offering their suffering and by praying in reparation for the ingratitude and sins of humanity. Then on September 23, 1973, to the amazement of all, the statue began to sweat from the face to the feet. Both eyes overflowed with tears which streamed down the face. A sweet fragrant odor filled the chapel. 
This occurred many times in the presence of others, including Bishop Shojito Ito, who had the tears tested at a leading Japanese university. The tests proved them to be human tears. The statue wept a total of 101 times. I saw tears flowing from the statue of the Blessed Mother streaming down her face to the grove at the base. I even tasted the tears, which were very salty. It made me think that the Blessed Mother must have a special message for me and for others, because when a human mother sheds tears in front of her children, there is a serious reason. So I thought that when the Heavenly Mother sheds her tears through a statue, she must have an urgent message for all of us. On Easter Sunday, April 22nd, 1984, Bishop Ito released his pastoral letter declaring the events of Akita to be supernatural and authorizing veneration of the Holy Mother of Akita. His official letter contained messages from Mary, including the following apocalyptic warning given to Sister Agnes on October 13, 1973, the anniversary of the miracle of the sun at Fatima. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be my rosary and the sign left by my son. Recite the rosary every day. If we fail to change, the consequences are extremely serious. As Our Lady said in Akita, when the fire comes, it will be worse than the deluge, worse than the flood of Noah. Now that's another question. How could this fire, this chastisement coming, be worse than the fire, than the deluge, than the flood. How could the fire be worse than the flood? Because we know in the fire not everyone will be killed. Maybe a quarter, maybe three quarters, but not everyone. But in the flood, everyone was killed but Noah and his family. Therefore, how can it be worse? The difference is, when the flood came, the water hit, and then it went up to your feet, then your ankles, then your knees. By the time it reached your neck, you were saying, my God, forgive me, I'm sorry. And I would say that 99% of those people went to purgatory. When the fire comes, it would be like me crushing a spider. So quick, so fast, there would be no time for repentance. You must become repentant Start praying to God with good, pure hearts. Convert to God and turn your lives over to Him. The world is so corrupt and egocentric, yet God loves us so deeply. He is trying to save us from the chastisement through Our Lady's messages. Oh, the thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. So the tears from heaven are the result of Mary's holy motherhood. She is the mother of the church and the mother of all humanity, a mission given her by her son, Jesus. She is crying because of what is happening now and what will happen to her church and to her children unless we respond. Our heavenly mother is weeping tears and tears of blood today for so many of her children blinded by sin and racing towards hell, towards the permanent and irreversible loss of their souls. How can a world that glorifies sin ever regain its conscience? Remarkably, it depends on our conversion. Each of us is responsible. At Fatima, the Blessed Virgin revealed that many souls go to hell because there is no one to pray and offer sacrifices for them. Through the reparation of others, these souls could have been given the grace to want God. And that's the bottom line. Ultimately, we either want God, and therefore we love Him and follow His commandments, or we don't want God and he will honor our choice by granting us eternity in hell without him and without his love. That's why these tears from heaven call us to a closer relationship with God. They invite us to reform our lives, making every thought, word, and action a step towards heaven and away from hell. In short, the tears from heaven call each of us to greater holiness. 
Today, unlike any other period in history, the world is witnessing extraordinary signs and wonders. God is speaking to humanity loud and clear through the mighty voice of nature, and perhaps even more powerfully through the gentle and silent tears of his mother. These are special times, times of special grace. We don't know how long we have until whatever these heavenly tears portend actually happens. But what we do know, similar to the example of an ocean liner, is that it can take a long time to turn around. We need to begin to turn our lives around today. We need to break old habits and form new ones, to practice charity and love at every opportunity, to fast, to sacrifice, and to avoid near occasions of sin as well as sin itself. We need time to build our trust and our faith in God, to pray and see the tangible results of prayer, to walk the path of holiness and to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then, and only then, can we wipe the tears from the eyes of our mother and begin to ascend the path to holiness. Can you ignore the tears of your mother?